are recording. Okay. Um, so the chair first must make a preliminary statement pursuant to chapter 20 of the act of 2021. This meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by Zoom or by telephone. <laughs> Uh, also via www.amherstma.gov. Um, no in-person attendance by members of the public will be permitted, but every, every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. Once again, and the website is www.amherstma.gov. And I can attest that the meetings are, can also be watched in retrospect live and living color on the on the Amherst YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Do we have any members of the public with us today? It does not appear that we do. I don't see anybody, no. Um, so I also just want to make sure uh, we are recording this meeting. Um, so if anyone else is doing so at this time, <clears throat> please notify us now. Hearing none. All right, well, I will share my screen. And uh, where is it? This one. Okay. So this is our agenda for today. So I will keep this up if we need to uh, refer back to it. Um, so the very first thing on the agenda is going to be the minutes from uh, the last meeting. Um, do we want to... Uh, Table these for now since Ken is not here. Lee was the only one present in this current meeting. Um, yeah, or, or are you comfortable, Richard, with approving these? I'm not. Um, I okay. did look briefly at the at the the video of that meeting just so the public is if looking at this sometime later. Um, I was not present at the last meeting. There was a quorum, June uh, <clears> 16th meeting. Uh, Ken is not who was at that meeting is not present today so we're not in a situation where we can approve these minutes today I think I think it would be better to table them to the next the approval to the next scheduled meeting that's fine so we will table these for uh, our August meeting so then uh, moving along uh, next thing on the agenda is the uh, excise abatements so here you will see a 2019 bill on the top uh, there's just one in the amount of $33.75. Second, you will see a 21 bill, again, just one in the amount of $97.34. Um, and then there are 27 for the calendar year of 2022, totaling the amount of $2,211.54. So the total for week uh, June 13th through June 28th is $2,342.63. Kim, could you hit the enlarge button one time? I can. Yes, I have to put my large nose right into the screen. There you go. There <laughs> Thank you. Go. Is that better? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, move to approve those abatements um, uh, from the week of June 13th. Uh, well, the two weeks of June 13th through to June 28th. Move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, play, say, say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Moving along, we have uh, the week of July 6th through the 7th. Well, just two days. Um, you will mm. see that there are four abatements for the calendar year 2022 in the amount of 183.90. Move, I move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and moving on, we have uh, July 12th through the 15th, uh, two from calendar year 2021 in the amount of $134.67. And there are eight for calendar year 2022 in the amount of $962.15 for a total of $1,096.82. Uh, I move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, moving on. Uh, July 20th through July 21st, there is only four for calendar year 2022, totaling $225.14. I move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Okay, and so moving on, we have here the omitted and revised commitment for uh, 114 Linden Ridge Road. Um, so this property is, um, this, this bill was um, missed when entering the final tax bills. So you will see the amount here, sorry, I keep moving that. Um, you will see the amount here of $12,838.57. Um, this property, something had happened in our billings, in our um, assessing system that caused it to not bill correctly. Um, so that's that, that correction. So this page here is the commitment to, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the, yes, the commitment to um, the collector. Um, and then you, go ahead. Can I just say, um, do, don't I see documentation about this property later on? Um, you do, yep, yep. Um, there's also the CPA tax here in the amount of 353.25. Sure. Um, that page there is also for the collector. Mm -hmm. um, then you will see them both on the same page here for the accounting office. So again, the 12,838.57 and the 353.25, that's the CPA. So total preliminary bills for this property was $13,191.82. Um, and again, here you'll just see um, the billing. So this was actually entered into the billing system here, which is, that's what that's showing. Is it, um, is it, it, is it important to, that we know why this was omitted originally or do we care? Um, I, yeah, it's it just, again, it was just the fact that it was, I don't think I have any calculation added down here to the end of this. Just bear with me. Yeah. Um, oh, I do. Okay. So for some reason, um, this property was not picking up both the, the land and the building. Um, I believe, if I'm I not mistaken. Don't I ahead. remember that that we did some work on this before? We've done others like this. Well, I don't know if this one uh, specifically, but we have done others like this. Um, I believe that, uh, I'm just looking for, yes. Yeah, so this was based on a partial completion of the building. Um, yeah. And so the building was completed. And for some reason, when that occurred, it didn't, I think I had done something wrong in the mm -hmm. assessing system and it wasn't calculating the value correctly. So going back to fix that, um, yeah. you'll see my math here. Um, I think I remember there was something about the second floor wasn't finished or. Um, I that's think we did a possibility. Yeah. I think yeah. that now that you say that, I recall yeah. that as well. Yeah. Um, so the building is 100% complete at this point, right. yeah. uh, showing that total value there, which again, yeah. you'll see up here. Yeah. Um, and Marcus. then, so what I did was I took the tax rate, figured out the total for the year, divided it by two. So that 12,000 is there. That's what the preliminary bills would be based on. And then you'll see down here where I did the calculation for the CPA. So it's a little bit longer, um, but you'll see, I came up with the $353 and 25 cents. Um, road is off of um, station road near the Belcher town line, right? I, yes. 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 All right. um, and so that's just the back of the record card. And again, you'll see the condition, the percent, there's nothing uh, pending anymore. This is a finished building. So Lee, you were correct. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not completed mm -hmm. prior so to preliminary bills. So again, let me just go back up here so you can see um, the breakdown of what we were doing here. So here we have the CPA surcharge of the 353.25. And then the real estate itself, twelve thousand eight thirty eight and fifty seven cents for a total of thirteen thousand one hundred ninety one dollars and eighty two cents is what we were billing for the first half. Do we do one vote here? Yes. Okay. So so I move that we approve the commitments and uh, the other documentation with our signatures. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. okay. So moving on to the next one, we have 11 Burgundy Lane. Um, this is uh, the page to the collector in the amount of $2,962.91. And then again, you'll see the CPA tax for uh, $56.98. Scrolling down here, you'll see them both on the same page for the commitment to the accounting office. So um, again, $2,962.91 in real estate, $56.98 in CPA for a grand total of 
$19.89 for the preliminary tax bills. Um, again, you'll see here, this is just showing that the bills have been inputted into the billing system, giving you the breakdown here again. And then continuing on, there will be documentation of what I was doing. Um, so again, here you'll see in 22, it was, uh, it. oh, this one must've been the one that was not billing correctly for some reason. Um, sorry, I got those two mixed up. So that the previous one was based on a completion of construction. This one was just for some reason, not billing at all. Um, so uh, same process, I took the value times the tax rate to figure out the total for the year and then divided that by two just to get the preliminaries. And then again, you'll see my calculation with the CPA. Um, just in case you're not familiar, I suppose, with this process, what you do is you take for residential properties, um, you take the value minus 100,000, multiply that by 3%, divide by 1,000, um, and then multiply by the tax rate. Um, and then that gives you the year's worth of CPA. So then again, I divided that by two to get the preliminary. So you'll well, the, see again, the 5698. The first 100,000 of value is exempt, right? On, on residential properties only. So for commercial, industrial, um, that does not occur. So you would shorten up this by taking the value times the 3% divided by 1,000 times the tax rate. And then depending on if you were looking for half the year or not, you could divide by two. Okay. All, All right. right. So let me go okay. back up here to the amount so you can see those again. So here again, we have the CPA at 56.98 and the real estate at 2,962.91 for a total of $3,019.89. And again, this was uh, billed this way because for some reason, um, the billing system and the assessing system didn't talk to each other. Um, and we didn't get a bill for this property. I move to approve the commitment and the accompanying documents with our signatures. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Moving along, I think we have one more. Can I ask you, how do you become aware of these uh, little glitches? Well, not, they're not really glitches, but they're omissions, right? Yeah, um, it, it depends on what kind of is happening. Um, sometimes it's something that I'll come across before I actually do the file where, um, you know, I know that there's going to be, maybe I've pulled the file already and it's being put into the billing system, but I've recognized that um, there's a building that is being renovated or being built that needs to have an, a change in value before the preliminary bills go out. Um, in the case of one completely missing Sometimes it's a matter of somebody calling us saying, I didn't get my tax bill. Can you send me a copy? And we realized that it didn't get billed. That's, um, nice sometimes... to do that to, that's nice of them to do that. To ask, <laughs> to ask uh, to I mean, they know one's coming. There should be one coming anyway. So they didn't get a copy of it. They know maybe their neighbors did or someone else in town did. So they know it's out there. Um, and in that case, sometimes that happens. Other times it's just a matter of I'm looking at something. I, I happen to come across this property. And I noticed that something doesn't look right on the records, on, on our record cards. Um, and I say, okay, well, you know, in this case, we'd be looking at it and we'd say, okay, last year's value was 278.6. Um, how come it didn't have a bill this year? So I would go in and I would look at permits and see, you know, what happened there. Um, sometimes it's a matter of a permit triggering something. So it really kind of depends on the situation. Um, also just for peace of mind, if this happens and it goes uncaught and someone doesn't call us and say, hey, I didn't, you know, didn't, didn't get a bill and I'm wondering where it is, the final bills will cause this to be found. Um, so essentially what would happen is my count wouldn't match when I pull it out of the billing system, or I'm sorry, when I pull it out of vision, the assessing system and put it into Munis it wouldn't match because Munis wouldn't create a bill for it. So it would have an odd number of parcels. So I'd have to go and find what's wrong somewhere. So it takes some time sometimes, but really dependent on the situation as to how it gets found. Mm -hmm. you, you, have an, you, you, you have an internal audit process too, right? That We do. Yeah, okay. that should, yeah, bounce it up. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. 
So, and you'll see often in the preliminary and the final tax bills that we have the supplemental bills and those are for, um, you know, like someone who's building a property. Uh, we don't want to slam them in, in their final tax bills. So we try to get that all into the system for the preliminary tax bill. So they get a piece of the building now, and then they get the rest of the building in their final tax bills. Um, just makes it more equitable for their pocket and just much easier to, to take as a taxpayer. So, all right, so let me get back up here where you can see the totals for this one. And there they are. So again, $3,019.89. And I think we just approved that. Our signature. Oh, did we? I'm sorry. We, I think we did that, yeah. Okay, all right. So moving on to the next one. I think there was one more. Yes. Um, this is the big enchilada, isn't it? This is, yes. <laughs> this is the actual, or the, the preliminary tax bills in total. So we have the amount of 29,000, I'm sorry, $29,212,858.66. So here you'll see on this page is for the, the uh, tax collector. I want to make sure you said that amount correctly. Can you say sure. it again? Absolutely. So twenty nine million two hundred twelve thousand eight hundred fifty eight and sixty six cents. Okay. Um, so here's the page for the uh, collector. Um, down here, you'll see the CPA tax to the collector in the amount of six hundred seventy five thousand six hundred forty seven dollars and forty four cents. Okay. And then um, you will see those values where we got them from Munis. Um, okay. I think the, the accounting portion is after. So, um, well, I think personal property comes next. Personal, yeah. yeah, personal property comes next. Let's just vote on the real estate for and the CPA first. Okay, so that's two. That's two sets of signatures. For yeah, for, um, yeah. For so real... first, we'll do real estate at twenty nine million two hundred twelve thousand eight hundred fifty eight dollars and sixty six cents. All right, I move to approve that commitment. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and then we'll do the our... CPA for six hundred seventy-five thousand six hundred. Uh, yes, yeah, six hundred seventy-five thousand six hundred forty-seven dollars and forty-four cents. Yeah, I think this is the last time Lee and I are doing this. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, move to approve the CPA um, uh, commitment for CPA funds. I move to approve those. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So let me just skip by personal property for a quick second, because I think here is just so you can see, there's the commitment to accounting. It does show the personal property tax as well, but I just wanted to skip through that quickly to show you the real estate in the CPA is there as well. Um, so let me just go back here then to personal property. So this page here is again for the collector in the amount of 1 million. $222,918.99. Um, and again, you'll see here that that amount has been entered into Munis, the billing system. And then again, back down here, you'll see it's entered on the commitment to accounting. And the CPA, I think, is at the bottom of that form? Yes. Yeah, okay. So the total that we're committing for both real estate and personal property, including CPA, is $30 million four hundred thirty five thousand seven hundred seventy seven dollars and sixty five cents okay i move to approve our document our, our signatures on the personal property documents as well as this um commitment to accounting second all those in favor please say aye 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 okay okay let me just catch up with you for a quick second on my notes here okay um, so the last thing here is the uh, lien for chapter 61. Um, so we have a new, oh, okay. So this lien um, has not been re-recorded in a very long time. Um, so when talking to the owners of this property, we've realized that uh, the acreage is not reflecting what's actually in chapter. Um, so there is new owners on this property as well. So we're waiting on a check from them to re-record the lien. But at the moment, this is for a release of chapter so that we can um, 
record a proper lien for them. Um, so here we have the property uh, located on Potwine Lane. What was recorded in the past was uh, 24.82 acres of which 17.5 were in chapter land. Um, so they were farming over half of the acreage. Um, I, I believe, let me just quickly, oops. Um, let me quickly pull up this parcel and I can tell you what the correct um, acreage is on that. So, um, so this is yeah. not about a transaction, is that correct? It's about, about a transaction as well as a correction. Okay. Um, so there are new owners for this particular property. Um, and, and they brought it to your attention? Um, nope. They, we just, we, when, when seeing that there were new owners on the property, uh, we went to go record a new lien. And when doing that, we have to make sure that where it says here, 24 acres of which however many are classified, we were realizing that that number isn't matching what we have on our records. So what we have right now, and this also matches the deed. So that's really important um, because we need to make sure that our information is matching the registry of deeds. Um, so, so parcel that contains the farming, the chapter land is 14.49 acres. Um, and then the the part of the property that has their house on it is 1.373 acres. So we just need to clean up this, this, um, this lien and we will do so once we receive the check from them to re-record, um, which we would need anyway because they're new owners. So we need to put the correct owner's names on there. So, so normally the process would be um, if the acreage was correct to just re-record a lien with the new owner's names on it. In this case, because we see that it's not accurate to what's listed on the registry of deeds on their deed, as well as our records here in the billing system, um, we want to release what's there because it's it's inaccurate. So is there actually less chapter land than we originally thought or more? There's less land altogether than what's recorded on this lien. So um, total, there's close to 15 acres um, with the house and the, the um, chapter where this obviously is showing 24 acres. So we have a little bit less than what, what was recorded. And at the time of this recording, it's a possibility that there was some extra acres and maybe the original owners had sold off some pieces, but regardless of the fact we need to correct the lien so that if there is ever a title search or any sort of documentation that needs to be pulled, for, you know, some sort of legal issue, um, this will cause a big issue showing that our records and the, the deed itself does not match this lien. Yeah, I spent two summers in college doing title searching at the family law firm. So I have some memory of all this stuff. But um, the, so the, 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 uh, the blanks at the top do they, those get filled in at the registry of deeds at some point? So those are um, sometimes when you file a deed, they give you a book page and document number. Um, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with why you would get that and when you would get that. Um, and then again, also with the, the um, certificate of the title, this is not having to do with a title. So we wouldn't need a number in that place. Um, and in this case, the last lien that was recorded did not get a document number. So that's why we left those two things blank. Um, and then the, the blanks here are just for um, the X's. So the name, the name on the, the name of the owner, is that the new owner or the old owner? This here is the new owner. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the old owner. The old owner. Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically what, just to summarize, what we're looking is for a vote to approve this release so that we can correct the acreage and add the new owner's name on there. So there's going to be a subsequent filing that um, with the registry of deeds after this? That's correct, yes. Okay. Now, if for some reason the owners decide that they are not going to uh, put this property in chapter land, we would have to create a rollback tax. Um, but, but assuming that they're gonna continue farming, they will send us a check for $105 written out to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts so that we can record a lien um, in their name with the correct acreage. 
And just so the pub, just so it's clear for anyone who's watching this, mm -hmm. rollback tax would get paid by whom? The new owner? At this point, yes, the new owners. Unless there's been an agreement at closing, um, it, it's assessed to the owner at the time. Okay. Okay. I move to approve our signatures on this document, on this release. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Well, that's it for documents. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, um, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't we have to pick a new date? Uh, yep, not yet. Um, so first I'm going to give you the assessor's update. Okay. Um, there's not a whole lot to say right now, but uh, next week is the assessor's school at UMass, which is really exciting because it's the first time that we've done this in two years. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really, really great to see that it's able to be back in person again. Um, I will be attending only on Monday because I have completed all my classes that are required for my designation and I have received my designation. Um, so basically what I need to do now is just keep up credits uh, every, I forget if it's every three years or every five now. Um, or every is that two. a matter of state law that you have to do that? Yes, yes. Um, so I will have to keep up a certain amount of credits in order to keep my designation. Mm -hmm. If I don't do that, I lose my designation, then I'll have to go back and take those classes again. And I can attest that the school is a rip in good time. <laughs> it's great. It, it's, it's really great because you, you make these connections that you wouldn't necessarily make. Are you um, going to special, uh, specialize at, at this class? So the class that I'm taking is yeah. oh. about 8 of 58. Yeah. and the new valuing system for the personal property yeah. um, class. So uh, it's only one day, which is sort of disappointing. I'd like to hear more about the personal property, but again, there's only so much you can say in, about personal property. <laughs> so- I would love to put every resident, every tax paying resident in Amherst through the whole prop two and a half mm -hmm. um, yeah. course, course part. It's a lot of information, but it's very easily miscued. And um, a lot of people don't understand that it's not, two and a half percent of their tax value or their tax dollars, it's two and a half percent as a whole of right. what we paid right. in last year. So in, it, or in the prior year, I should say. So right. it is, it's something easily mistaken and um, it, it very some, something that I often explain to people during final tax bills. So yeah. um, the other things that are going on is Roy uh, will be here. He's our consultant for the overvaluation. Uh, I'm sorry, the, um, revaluations. Um, he will be here next week to take the remainder of the building permits and um, help me complete those. Once those are done, then we'll start working on the actual valuation for the fiscal year. Um, I have been, and Teresa has been working with the senior center on the tax work off program. Um, there's just a lot of new faces in town hall and in senior center as well. Uh, so we're just trying to all get on the same page and be most efficient as possible. If there's any changes that we wanna to make to the system, uh, now would be the time to do it since we're all new. Uh, we- Without invading anyone's privacy, how many people participate in the tax work off program? I think it depends year to year. Um, in the past two years, we really haven't had anybody, but prior to that, it sounds like there were some years that we filled all the slots. And I, if I recall correctly, there was 30 something slots. Wow. Um, but you know, it's kind of right now, it's kind of a struggle to get people to want to do this because it's just nerve wracking with COVID being around and the past sure. two years, they didn't offer the program. The um, center does a nice job of distributing, of disseminating the information about this so that people can yeah. see. Yes. And we're working on the website as well too, to make it a little bit better for and easier to follow and just have more information on there for that program as well. And hopefully once we get this all straightened out, we can work on the veterans um, work off as well and try to make that as easy and um, you know most information on the web as possible. Hmm. Um, also when talking with the senior center, myself and Jen LaFountain, the collector uh, had volunteered that if they wanted to do an in-person and or um, Zoom seminar about the tax work off about any exemptions about uh just how taxes work in general that we would be happy to do that so mm -hmm. it looks like we're trying to schedule something in early december to um make that available for the seniors or anybody that wants to join that meeting Has that um, it will be at before? the senior center has that ever happened before not that i'm aware of but again you know I, i'm not we sure have, we have had informational um things on the exemptions 
um, over at the senior center at times. I think we actually had one down at Green Leaves at one time too. Would there be any value in getting that up on the YouTube on on the YouTube channel so the general public would have access to it? Absolutely. And one of the suggestions was actually to do something very specific just to that. Um, we can put out just informational things to watch, or we could try to do a webinar um, where people are able to attend um, and then just record because they'll have questions that sure. you know we may not address in just a regular um, discussion without participation. Good. So um, there's Targeted definitely December. some, you know, we're working on some ways to Okay. Um, answer people's questions. And Good. we want to make sure that those who can't attend for any reason, whether they're just not able to get out of their house or they're working or whatever the case is, that they still have that available to them. Um, be good. And it's nice to have something recorded where people are talking because, um, you know, sometimes just reading this stuff is very dry. And so people start reading it and they're like, oh, forget it. I'm not, you know, so it's nice to have somebody talking. Right. Yeah, well, I could, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to be present for that either either in person or electronically to to watch that happen. Okay. All right. I will keep you posted then. Um, like I said, we're working on early December for now, and we're working on what exactly we're going to talk about. So um, I, it's a great time to do it because tax bills will be going out at the end of December, so it'll be fresh in people's minds um, if they're eligible, if they want to inquire about exemptions. Um, you know, veterans, blind senior, whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, and then also the work off program will be uh, talked about then too. So I don't know exactly the, the requirements and deadlines for the work off program yet, but you know, something certainly will be addressed then for that. So um, those are the really the most important things that are happening right now. Can I um, ask you know, about uh, the, the current status of any presentation to the, to the uh, town council? Yeah. For for uh, regarding uh, residential exemption? At this moment, we have not heard from town council whether they want a presentation. Okay. Oh, all right. But you have one prepared. We do. Um, at this point, the data is from last fiscal year. So depending mm -hmm. on if and when they would want a presentation, we may have to update it. But yes, that, that um, uh, PowerPoint that I had sent you guys yeah. last week, I right. think, or two weeks ago, yeah. um, is is what we would be using for our presentation. We've got a we've got an actual. Um, you have a scheduled appearance, don't you? Um, that's mandated by law, right? In the fall. Yes. And do we have a date for that? I don't think so. Not. I don't think yet. It's usually I think early November, uh, late October, depending on when we get certification from the state. Um, we have to have our values approved before we can do that. Yeah. Um, and so last year, as you saw, we had to do it twice because we we jumped the gun. Um, yeah. So we had everything all approved by the council, but we didn't have it approved by the state first and we have to do that. So, that. Yes. Right. so yep, we gotta, it'll all depend. I mean, this year could be slightly slower than normal just because it's the revaluation and there's a lot more entailed with it. Um, but I would still expect probably beginning of November. I can't think of anything else to talk about. How about you, Lee? No, no, I think. All right. Oh, just uh, to confirm our, our status, that is uh, myself and Richard. Um, now we're good until when? <laughs> we're good until the end of June. That's okay. right. Okay. Uh, 2023. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Okay. And if, if either of you have any thoughts of someone who may be interested in um, coming onto the board, please let me know because, because we have two slots empty um, at the yeah. end of next June, if we don't fill those, we do not have a qualifying board. Um, so we're hopeful to recruit before that happens. So again, if you have any thoughts of anybody that might be interested, please let me or Paul know um, so we can reach out to them. Okay. Okay, I can think of one, I have one person in mind, I'll get back to you about them. Okay. All right. That would be great. All right. Well, um, hearing that there's nothing else to talk about, I'm just looking at the calendar for our next meeting. Um, and I'm thinking August 18th, which is also a Thursday. I already have it scheduled. Oh, perfect. Hang on a minute. There's something going on. 
I have my calendar here. You want to do it at the same time? I have it scheduled for 930. Yes, if that's continuing to work for everybody, that's great. Hang on a minute. Sure. What is it about the 18th? No, I think I think that'll work. Nine, okay. 930 on Thursday, August 18th? Yes. Okay. All right. So we will schedule that. Again, our next meeting will be August 18th at 930 a.m. Um, and so before we go into executive session, we do have one uh, discussion of an over-evaluation um, to talk about, and then we will adjourn immediately after that. I'm sorry, the, uh, um, the executive session regarding, regards the over-evaluation? Yes. Okay, so, so that's the generic reason we're presenting for why we have to go into executive session? Yes. Okay, um, I move that we, so I'm gonna move to go into executive session. Second. For, for, for that purpose, we will not return and, and only that purpose and then we will and we will not return af after uh, leaving zoom correct yeah all right second all, all those in favor please say aye. aye aye okay all right i will stop the recording thank you <laughs>